and grow YouTube show. In your book, you talk about the energetics of plants, which I uh -huh. thought was really interesting, and the energetics of people. It kind of reminded me of like when I was into Ayurveda and kind of uh -huh. all of the different doshas and, and energies within your body. But in your book, you talk about the energetics of plants and how you, you match them to the energetics of people. Can you kind of dive into that a little bit? Yeah. So yeah, the, once again, this comes back to traditional systems of medicine from all over the world have their own way of understanding and classifying the energetics of specific plants and also the constitutions of humans and how they fit together. So it's way, it's way more complex than just, let's say you have uh, intestinal gas so you take mint well that is a really helpful starting point but for some people mint can cause heartburn you know and so you have to figure out how they match and I think a lot of people can relate to understanding how foods or herbs can have an energetic quality when we think about what we are attracted to during specific seasons for so for instance in the summer we might be really wanting cucumber or cucumber and lemon water uh, or watermelon. And those foods are all very cooling to our body. And in the winter, we are going to crave cinnamon and cayenne and soups made with warming spices and herbs. And that's because our bodies tend to be running cooler in the winter. So that's a sort of a, a simple seasonal example. But if you've ever noticed how some people have really dry hair or some people have really oily hair or dry skin or oily skin or some people have a lot of trouble with their sinuses over the winter getting too dry and others don't, right? We have these kind of what my teacher Michael Moore called of like constitutional leanings. We run cold, we run warm, we run dry or moist. And so herbs have qualities where they're either like moistening or drying or warming or cooling. And so matching an herb's energetics to our energetics is just a more effective way of delivering medicine. And you know, that can be a little complex to, um, to learn, there's a couple books like The Alchemy of Herbs I would recommend to your readers by Rosalie de la Foray is a great one for kind of beginning understanding the energetics of plants. Yeah, I know just from listening, just from what you said, I definitely run dry mm -hmm. and I run hot. And I feel like that's something that you just need to kind of intuitively know about yourself. Like I'm always mm -hmm. sweating in the middle of the night and my skin is dry. So for... So you're saying, knowing that I can consume herbs and plants that are cooling and moisture-based mm -hmm. to right. heal myself or to help with my dry skin. Yes, exactly. So for example, since you like mint tea, you might combine some marshmallow root in that tea, which is cooling and moistening. Or you might include some cinnamon, um, which is moistening in the winter and it's warming, but not super heating. So that might be like a nice combination for you. And you know, it's the same thing with food as medicine that our moistening foods are the ones that are really high in soluble fiber, like oatmeal and barley and chia seed and okra. You know, all those like slimy foods are like, mm -hmm. they're like lotion or moisturizer for our insides. So mm -hmm. yeah, we could think about herbs and foods that have those energetic qualities. <laughs> Doom, 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 do